my God. I'm taller than everybody that comes on this show. Then you, you've just thrown the whole curve off. How tall are you exactly? Five eleven and a half. <laughs> Oh, no, now really, I'm really five, depressed. Five, but it's a big half. The <laughs> last, last half is a big half. Uh, congratulations on the book coming out, Who's Running the Asylum. You have some, uh, make some uh, pretty interesting statements here. You, you talk about, in your prime, how you think you would have maybe uh, stacked up against Shaquille O'Neal. Or, you know, well, what do you think might would have happened? You versus Shaquille O'Neal today. Because people sometimes lump the two of you together. Yeah, because we're... Both terrible foul shooters. But uh, other than that, uh, uh -huh. Sha Shaquille and I is like comparing me with Clark Gable. Mm -hmm. In this case, I'm Clark Gable and he's, uh, he's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he played. I thought you were going to be self effacing for a second no, and then, no, no, nah. No, no, nothing like Screw that. Screw that. No. He uh, plays an entirely different type of basketball game. Mm -hmm. that he uses his physicality, mm -hmm. and he's a big, strong young man, and uh, that works well in today's game. Mm -hmm. If he was facing me and other guys of my time, not so, not so good. I mean, I'm a guy bench pressing around 600 pounds when I was at, at my 600 best. 600 pounds? Yeah, right. So, I'm at 5'10". Uh, that's pretty good. I'll yeah, just work on it a little while. <laughs> I'll be in your bad. league, my friend. Right, right. That's why you better be rather nice to me here, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and I'm a little surprised because I know you want to talk about a subject that uh, is dear to my heart. Well, we got to talk about this. Yeah. You made a statement, and and yeah. and, and this yeah. statement's going to follow you around for a while. That you for a while that you slept with twenty thousand women. You made that statement. <laughs> now, and I, you know, and I got to say, that's uh, that's the kind of thing that you say, and then yeah. people bring it up later. Bring it up later. You, Especially twenty thousand women like you, right? Exactly. Right, well, I mean, right. it's not just me. Have you seen? There's a clock in right. Times Square. Take yeah. a look at this thing. Let me it's see. It's pretty it. incredible. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think that. Uh, oh right. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. I, yeah I, now, I'm I curious. Yeah, listen, I I'm like curious. that. I'm curious. I want to know about my family share. That's the part uh, I'm curious about. Well, first of all, it was Encounters. But, you know, I thought maybe one of the reasons you invited me on the show mm -hmm. was to give me an award from the, the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. Because whenever people see me now, they go, 20,000. And let's see, he must have started when he was like 15, and he's now maybe 55. Mm -hmm. So let's see, 20,365 into 20,000. And, uh, you know, and then... So you're, seven, uh, you're so getting people thinking. Not only that, I'm teaching them mathematics, <laughs> which is really the whole, the whole story here, you understand? I don't you know? think that's going to be a word problem for kids. <laughs> <laughs> if Will Chamberlain is with 10 women on a train headed east... That's right. That, there you go. That's right. That's right. And when he gets to Missouri, <laughs> yeah, God. Right, right. All right, but uh... but on, but on the serious side of that, though, you know, just so women don't think me of being really whatever, uh, the number was uh, to make a statement about something, and it was not ever to sort of like uh, belittle the ladies that I've known and make them just another number. In fact, in, in, my, in my book, they were a number, really great-looking numbers they were, you know what I'm saying? But uh, what I was trying to say in my 20, book... 20,000. 20,000, right, right. That's right. all I'm thinking as you're talking. Yeah. I'm not yeah. hearing any there's of this. There's nothing wrong with short, short romance. You keep fading out, and there's the number 20,000 comes there's in. There's nothing wrong with short ro romance, believe me. Short romance. As long as it's a happy thing, yeah, going on, <laughs> right, believe me. But the idea was to say that, you know, sex really rules the world. Uh-huh. And that, you know... For men who think that having 1,000 different women is really cool, mm -hmm. I have found out. But you have to first find out mm -hmm. that having one woman a 1,000 different times is what's really happening. Oh. But yeah. how'd you... Yeah, right. Yeah. That's, that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Now go ahead and so go ahead. So you yeah, yeah. had sex 1,000 a, a thousand times <laughs> with each of the 20,000. That's what I'm thinking now. Take, I'm really impressed it takes, now. It takes stamina. It takes stamina. It takes stamina. All right, well, let's talk yeah. about another number, all right? Go let's ahead. talk about the number 100 points in right. one game, which I believe was versus the Knicks, 1962. That's right. Yeah. Is that right? That's a long, long time was there ago. A... Right. Yeah, right, right, right. Was right. there a point? 100 points in one game. Was there a point where, where just the other team, like, left and made sandwiches on the bench? I mean... <laughs> well, I really wish it was. Actually, they were really very embarrassed about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and, and so they were mad at me. You know, and I was just out there trying to have fun. Did you start to, like, at, at 85 points, did you start to feel bad a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Bit? Like, and the people like, thought, I'll just try and miss this yeah. one 100 points. And I did that. I know. I did did that. Then my mother scolded me when I got home. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> oh, you know, it, was, uh -huh. it, it was not an easy night. No. Yeah, no, because I had a lot of friends so. on the Knicks. Let's talk about, uh, well, Michael Jordan. I'm Michael. curious. Uh, yeah. Michael Jordan, say we had a time machine here, and uh, we could send Michael Jordan 
back to the Civil War. No, that's stupid. <laughs> what if, that's just my own fantasy, yeah, right, you know? Right, right, okay. uh, what if we could send Michael Jordan uh, back to playing uh, basketball with you in your prime? All right? How do you think he would do in those days? Well, first of all, I'm glad you said with me, mm -hmm. you know, and not, and not again me. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jordan is one of those rare specimens that could have played at any particular time and is a gifted, uh, gifted athlete who uh, is using those gifts uh, in basketball incredibly so. Mm -hmm. uh, he has been the liaison between uh, something that's not so good and making it great for all the rest. I think that almost every man in the NBA should give him 10% of their checks. Now, what, what would his playing style, how would that have translated back then? Well, his playing style is he's six foot seven and he's uh, like 197 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, coming into what we call our domain, the pivot mm -hmm. for us big guys, mm -hmm. wouldn't that have been very wise of Michael, you know, if he was playing during our time? Uh, so we would say, uh, Michael, you know, as long as you do all those fancy things outside of where we are, that's fine. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been good for Michael. Really? No. You no. think uh, he'd have been crushed, is what you're saying? I don't think I know you've been crushed. <laughs> right, yeah, really? Right, he just yeah. wouldn't have worked back then? No, he would have came in there once or twice. What about the 360-degree whip-around dunk? Right. What would people have thought of that at the time? Well, you know what? I'm glad you said that because, you see, the mentality of the fan today is, mm -hmm. is wonderful, and they've learned to accept showbiz. Right. And Michael is the epitome of showbiz, mm -hmm. along with that great talent. During my time, if you did a 360, first of all, uh, the opposition would take it as an insult that you would try to do something like that against them. Mm -hmm. uh, the coach on your own team, if you weren't at least 90,000 points ahead, would bench you. And the fans would look at you like, well, he's the biggest hot dog in the world. So you're saying Michael Jordan back then would have been on the bench the whole time? Absolutely. Uh, you know, being considered a hot dog. Think about that. And that's, and that's the truth. Really? But now, in Chicago, if he doesn't give you one of those 360s you're talking about, right. even though their team is 90 points ahead, right. They're looking for something spectacular. The for fans me. will turn oh, on right, you. Right, oh, you're right. Back then, it was more about teamwork, yeah. working well, together. Absolutely, absolutely. What's happened to basketball? Were you a basketball player? Who me? Well, I had to, I, I used to like to play basketball, but uh, and I was had the height and everything. I lacked what's called coordination. Oh, and oh, oh, it's oh. true. Yeah. And I found out later that you need that. I didn't yeah, right. wear. I was one of those guys who was like, to me, to me, you know, and then. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And I'd get it, and I'd, I fell a lot. Yeah, yeah. I wept openly sometimes wow. during the game. It was just well, a messy that, well, thing. That could be a problem. You know yeah. Saying? Yeah, you know. Yeah. But and, still, and, I'd have given you a run for your money. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, we'll talk about a record. So this, this, this blew me away, but uh, you, uh, you're you a competitive guy. I and, think so. And you, okay. I didn't know this. This translates into your personal life. You like to drive cross-country. And some people do. I've driven cross-country a few times. I enjoy it. But you like to do it really fast. Is that right. the case? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. How fast are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about trying to average up in the 130s and go as high as 175, 180 miles an hour. And, so, you know, and that's a nonstop drive from like New York. And this York. is in a Volkswagen Bug. That's the impressive yeah, well, thing. Well, I did, I did a commercial for a Volkswagen. It's with a little different engine, but you know. <laughs> but what are you talking about? How can you go that fast and not be constantly pulled over? What happens? Well, you I mean, have to be clever. You have to use your Cla eyes. What do you mean clever? Oh, You're going yeah, 180 oh. miles an hour. Yeah. Everything's a blur. You're just yeah, well, birds are just piling up on your windshield. A clever You're... bird. A clever, a clever blur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. well, no. You also, you also, you like to. Um, I, 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 this I found kind of interesting, but you, you have a, a, a method for sort of like killing time. Yeah. Like when you see that you're six miles out of Denver and you're on the road going 150 miles an hour, what right. do you do to try and kill? I hold my breath and see if I can hold my breath all the way to Denver. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was eight or nine miles away, you know? And uh, so I work, you know, I, I got to work my way up. But when I start in New York, I can only hold my breath about like a minute. And by the time I'm halfway across the country, I can get up to almost five, five and a half minutes, you know, and holding my breath. Holding so, your breath. What I would love to see, I would love to be the, see the policeman who pulls you over. Right. Going 125 miles an hour, right. pulls you over, walks yeah. up, yeah. looks into the windshield, it's yeah. Wilt Chamberlain there, and he goes, <laughs> 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 no, I would, you know, and then passes out. What, so that's just to amuse yourself. Well, yeah, it is, and I sure wouldn't advise anyone to do it because it's one of the dumbest things that one could possibly do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Thanks because, for adding that. They don't yeah. like people out there yeah. holding their breath as no, long, no, to the point of passing out yeah, while they're driving can, a car 125 miles an hour. And you definitely can pass, pass out. Just you right. also, you like to water ski at great speeds. Yeah, I tried for the quarter mile uh, water ski speed record at 126 miles an hour it was. You know, and Use blah, blah. Wa you can't water ski 125 miles an hour. Well, I can, and I, and I did. You gotta have big feet, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it helps out. You like, didn't use skis? <laughs> well, 
No, I use I use skis. In fact, I, I, thought, I thought even had you big did 125 feet. miles. I, I would just love to see the old fisherman now sitting on the dock and. Yeah, right, oh, that's exactly right. I yeah. think that was Will Chamberlain wow. <laughs> going by. Well, we that's used to incredible. we used to ski on the Sacramento River mm -hmm. in California, and there was a highway right right by the the river, uh -huh. and the cars would be going 70, 80 miles an hour, and we would just shh, run on past the cars, you know, and then we would slow up and see their expressions on their face because they couldn't believe it either. <laughs> okay, well, mm -hmm. there's that and plenty more in the, this book. Who's running the asylum? The insane world of sports today and uh, it was great to meet you finally well, listen, very nice to have you on the program can you come back sometime I'm gonna tell you something I enjoy your program I really watch it so I, I want I want to say to you. you are funny you understand wow. you are you are funny you really are it's nice of you to say right right finally right. thank you okay, thank someone you. who admits they've yeah. seen the show I've seen the show he actually watched the show all right Will yeah. Chamberlain thank you very much Mary Chapin Carpenter